Welcome to part 2 of Learjet 101, the series where we take you from cold and dark to cruising at Mach 0.8 in the stratosphere. Come and join us! The first thing you'll want to do when entering the cockpit is to power up the main electrical system and verify proper GPU power is being received. This is accomplished by powering up batteries 1 and 2, the emergency batteries, then the inverters. The next thing you'll do is to switch on the left and the right avionics master switches. This should power up both primary flight displays and multifunction displays as well as a few other systems. After this, it's time to begin initializing the flight management systems. This will take a few minutes to spool up. In the meantime, we'll open up the checklist. First important item to check is the primary flight controls. We'll need to verify the control rods and cables move freely and to their correct orientation for both the yoke and the rudders. Next up, we'll need to check that all four electrical bus ties are open and that all the circuit breakers are set on both the first officer's and the captain's side. Double check the correct position of the electrical switches, then verify that the DC system reads 28 volts and the AC reads 115 volts. This is absolutely critical. If proper power is not received, the main battery bus will open below 18 volts and will subsequently kill the whole system. You'll then need to check the auxiliary hydraulic system and set the brakes. Check the emergency brake. Verify oxygen pressures in the green, then check the quick donning mask. We'll verify all engine instruments are properly powered. We'll need to check the correct orientation of all relevant pressurization switches and then set the proper landing elevation for our destination. We'll also want to make sure the environmental controls are properly set. Then check the fuel system starting with the jet pumps on the left, the standby pumps, the fuel crossflow valve, and the mirrored systems on the other side. Here we'll do the instrument lights test. This test simultaneously activates the cabin fire test and the scavenge pumps. We'll do the master caution inhibitor. Now we'll begin the rotary test beginning with the gear unsafe warning mark. Now for the fire detection test. We should see 10 lights go off. The overspeed aural warning. The cabin altitude aural warning. The angle of attack indicator with stall prevention for both left and right sides. and the mock trim test. We'll then begin the trim check, starting with the primary pitch trim. Then we'll verify that our independent secondary trim system is operative. We'll then check the primary pitch trim disconnect. Checking the rudder trim. And finally, the aileron trim. Next, we'll run our pitch trim takeoff configuration warning check. We'll start with turning the auxiliary pump on 
and bringing our flaps down to 20 degrees. We'll then bring up our thrust lever to the MCR setting and if we've set it incorrectly we should hear a configuration warning horn. When the FMS is initialized, verify correct latitude longitude position, then begin inputting your flight plan. This is an abbreviated sample flight plan from Austin to Del Rio, Texas, with the standard instrument departure procedure, a few waypoints, and departing on runway 18 left. From here we'll begin inputting the passenger, cargo, and fuel load on board. To verify the exact fuel quantity and weight, we'll refer to the fuel totalizer gauge which displays the fuel in the wing and the fuselage tanks. Now to calculate the performance data. With 0 degrees of runway slope and 15 Celsius, we'll be using 20 degrees of flaps, no anti-icing gauge, and all normal systems armed. Our V-speeds are now correctly calibrated. V1 is the go-no-go -go decision speed, VR is rotation speed, and V2 is the best target airspeed in the event of an engine failure, as shown in blue below on the primary flight display. Uncage the standby attitude indicator, then run a TCAS test. TCAS stands for Traffic Collision Avoidance System. TCAS system test okay. And our final before starting engine check is the rudder boost check. Begin by turning the auxiliary pump on and going to flaps 40. Next, we'll fully depress the left and the right rudder pedals. You should see a little green RB, short for rudder boost.